chat, thank pause. Okay, so we're going to go through uh, the grading, uh, the grading syllabus for showdown. Sure uh, we'll start with Kihon first, and we'll do. Uh, then we'll go on to Kumite, talk about the important points. Then, if we have time, we'll go on to Kata, but uh, that's a different animal altogether. But first of all, the Kihon. So let's start. Uh, okay. Now, depending, I know everybody's a little bit kind of uh, depending on space, so just try your best. Okay, so from here, left leg forward, get on the right. Ten. Okay, so Tommy Kwanda is how much you that's sliding uh, three uh, three punches. Okay, yeah. Knee. Tan. Chi. Okay, what the? Maybe you tell, like, find your own space, guys. Okay, each. Knee. Tan. Chi. Okay, what the? How are you? Look, guys, of course, any questions, just unmute yourself, ask away, uh, but we'll, we'll explain it. So each kind of part, each combination of the syllabus has its unique qualities that we're looking for. Um, now, with this one, what we're trying to see is that you have control of your center line, that ability to drive forward, to thrust forward. So Toby Conde means to kind of thrust and fly forward whilst maintaining that form. And the second thing is about that kind of fine hip controls. So you're kind of vibrating your hip. Uh, so I'll just give you an example of this. And it's kind of probably worth pointing out for the whole of Kihon, is that, you know, when we're landed in Shoma, that chips work. Then what we're trying to do is drive from that back leg where to, to synchronize our punches. Now, so we're landing in Shoma, and body moving forward, that's fine. We're relaxing, and then driving again, locking into Shoma. And then this third one as well. Now, what people tend to do is they tend to to land into Hamney, they rotate shoulder and then they keep still in the third one. What we want to try to see is this kind of engagement of your back leg each single time in this fast twitch. It's a, it's a, it's a combination that gives you the ability to show they have fine hip control and, and twitch control of your back leg and your hips. So you're landing in shoulder dash, shoulder dash, shoulder dash each time, whilst we have the ability to fly and thrust through the movement, yeah? What's also super important, I'll show you from this side, is that this foot, as you, as you fly and thrust, this doesn't come off the ground this way, that you kind of keep connected through your thigh muscle. So your foot kind of stays flat. You don't have this action going on. Understand? Okay, so let's try that again. Uh, so again, one more time. Uh, it's gonna be really difficult, I think, to count. So guys, Tommy Conde, Salmon Zuki, just a couple of times, like I'm going to kind of scan through, see the common mistakes, and then we'll talk about it even more. So, Tommy Conley, Samuel Zuki, off you go, give it a go. Okay, okay, good. So look guys, what I'm seeing a lot of is like this kind of rocking of your stance. It's much better to not use your hips at all and keep your stance solid than to use your hips so much that it starts kind of rocking the foundation. Foundation is paramount, yeah? You keep your stance solid and then from that solid stance, then you start to build on it, yeah? But you can't use, you can't use your hips if it's breaking your foundation. So I'm seeing an awful lot of people who are you're kind of, uh, you know, stepping forward, and then, then, then it's all this with your front knee and your back knee. Much better just engagement of your core and keeping a strong stance. Once you have that, then you can add maybe a little bit more. But most important is this engagement of your stance and keeping that strong. Understand? Okay, okay, one more minute, guys. Give it a go. Any questions, just ask. Okay, another point, guys. Another point is, is that we're, we're not asking you to go one, one, two. Like this kind of off timing or like this kind of one and then one, two is like, I don't know, it's a unique thing that people do uh, for, for no reason whatsoever. It's really important to do three basic techniques and do them with equal kind of uh, 
effort and an equal kind of focus. And so if you're doing that middle punch, that Gakuzuki fat, see people tend to do this, they go one and they land and they're in kind of this shizen natural position. They start the punch and start the hit. And because they're doing this fast, they're doing maybe half punch and they finish with this third one engaged. So they go one, two. No, you must punch, one punch, two punch, three punch. Take your time, get it right, but it should be one, two, three. Three good techniques, all with equal effort. Understand? Any questions, guys? Just ask. One more minute. Scott? Yeah. So, we're, we're, I mean, I think as an instructor, instructor, it's quite a good idea maybe just to teach people to do one, just Oyazuki first. I mean, yeah. so what I tend to do is get people just to do all you can get used to, you know, back leg through a slanting and showman, and then add on the extra two. Just yeah. maybe, maybe that's not for you, just for other people watching or people taking their down break. Maybe think about that sometimes. Just do one first and then build up from there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the thing is, is that, like, this is the culmination of all those Kihon tests you've done. And all the, I mean, like, obviously, up until this point, there hasn't been uh, Tobi Konde or Izuki. There's certainly been Ori Yoriash has been sliding in, but it's, it's a combination of all those things. So, so everything that you've done right from 9th Q when you step forward or Yuzuki in that first heads, where you're trying to synchronize the back leg drive with the punching hand, like that's still of equal importance. So, so if you're just kind of playing lip service to the first one, playing lip service to the second one, because you're doing it quickly and then finishing with a good third punch, it's no good. Each one equal merit. But yeah, a good training tool, driving in Oizuki, just getting used to that ability to make Tobi Kondi, that sliding drive, uh, that is kind of vital for this for this exercise. Okay? Okay, we're not, we're, we'll move on shortly, guys. Any more questions, just ask. Oh, no questions. Okay, then guys, challenge yourself, yeah? So so you wanna, you wanna be able to show and demonstrate that you can shift your body mass at least a stance and a half. So again, I'll show you from, from this point, yeah? So, so, for example, my foot is here, then if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna set forward or Izuki, then, okay, that's my normal stance. I have to think, well, your stance is too short and it's long, my back foot wants to finish about here. So, so if I'm starting from this point, I'm driving, stepping and driving, and then making sure I shift my body mass that shoulder width wide left. Okay, that's what you're aiming for. But step by step, don't, what you don't want to do is then orchestrate it and you start leaping. And you know, you're not kind of leaping forward and you lose all connection. You have to drive but maintain connection and, and, and make that distance. So you're driving but maintaining that connection as you drive through. Understand? Okay, 34 seconds. Any more questions? Just ask. Eden, you're landing in Hamley, the first one. Show me, show me, show me. Hip square each time. Okay, okay, yummy, yummy. Then, um, yeah, just a couple, a couple more points. We're going to move on because, like, obviously, there's quite a few combinations that we need to get through. Just bear in mind, each combination kind of is, is your ability to demonstrate unique physical traits. And so, like, you know, certainly lots of instructors within the HDKI, lots of examiners in the HDKI, all slight nuances because, you know, we're all different body types. So, uh, you know, one, the same principles might kind of be different, like physically different in one body type compared to another body type. And that's just the nature of, of karate, but also the beauty of karate because it's always different and changing. Okay, but what is really important is the fundamental principle is identical. That ability to drive from your back leg, that ability to keep your core engaged, that ability to find control your body and twitch your body to produce this explosive connected movement, yeah? That's what you're trying to demonstrate. No matter how you're doing it, that's in essence what you're trying to demonstrate. And ultimately, a grading examiner is looking for that. Not looking for a superficial element, but for a much more kind of a, a deeper element, which is body control. Understand? Yeah. So everything that I say and everything that we're gonna talk about in the next hour or so, you know, is all the superficial elements to demonstrate that you have a fine level of body intelligence and, and fitness and strength and, you know, elasticity and flexibility, that type of thing. Okay? Okay. Okay, next one. Next one. 
Okay, cross sensing that box. So group sensing and negative sensing are different. Okay, spin on that. Okay, so spinning, spinning like that's you. Okay, so 360 gap is you. Okay, you're a itch. Knee. Ta. Chi. Cha. Okay, what the hit? Okay, send the gang actually. Okay, itch. Knee. Ta. Chi. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so 360 spinning Gakazuki. Okay, good times each, guys. Let me see what you're doing and then we'll talk about it. Okay, okay, good, yummy. So, same thing, you're trying to demonstrate the same thing as the first combination, this Tobikonde Samvonski, this spinning 360 Gakazuki. You're trying to uh, demonstrate the same thing, uh, obviously with a different combination or, or different technique. And that is control of your sense line. That is ability to drive from your back leg. That is ability to kind of squeeze your inner thigh muscles. So, just watching quite a few people are, are a little bit kind of releasing the stance. And so, you know, you're, you're maybe stepping a little bit first or, or kind of pivoting on the, the ball, the foot, getting your foot around and then tending on your heel. Okay, ideally, inner thigh muscle squeeze, heel pivot as a result. Heel pivot in itself is not important. But by controlling that inner thigh muscle squeeze and rotation of your hip, you're naturally pivot on your heel. You're coming around, then driving forward and maintaining any, any control, yeah? So you're having that fluid, smooth, kind of forward motion, but with the rotation of your hip, in a thigh muscle squeeze and driving in. And then all you're doing is you're adding that drive of the leg with the extension of your punch. So you're getting this compression, driving forward. Compression, driving forward. And landing in that stable stance. But it's about keeping your back straight and keeping control of your, uh, of your hips, okay? Okay, give it a go, guys. A couple of times. Any questions? Just ask. If you need inspiration, you can watch AJ Sensei and Rue Sensei. Any questions? Though, just ask. Noah, keep your back straight as you're rotating. Ella, it looks like you're stepping across first. It doesn't start with a foot movement, it starts with a hip rotation and back leg drive. Then Jules, don't come up and then down, yeah? Try to sink into your stance as you initiate the movement. Yeah, yeah, mate. So, guys, like, obviously, we're, like, you know, this Kihon, well, this Kihon technique, it's not a, you know, it's not a practical technique. You know, it, like, like many of these things, you're not really doing because of the, the practical application of this technique. You know, you're certainly not, if someone was standing in front of you, there's no way that you'd spin 360 to punch them, yeah? That, I mean, obviously, it's very much similar to, uh, to the Sambon ski, right? If I, if I punch, if I punch here, then I've either hit them or I haven't hit them. If I then punch them again, then it's in the same spot. So I've either pushed them or I'm gonna miss again. And, and certainly the third one is over, overplay, right? But what you're trying to do, even though that there's no practical application for these three punches, you're demonstrating this fine twitch, that's engagement of your core to do that, right? Okay, so this is the same. You're not trying to kind of do something that has any practical merit. What you're trying to show is that you have that physical intelligence that can be adapted to any practical situation. So make sure, Make sure you're not stepping across. You're not doing this kind of two-point turn, which is like ball of foot, kind of anchor your stance and then rotate. You are trying to, you're trying to make sure that you have and demonstrate that inner thigh muscle control, the fast rotation of your hip, that control of your center, that ability to kind of sink into your stance rather than come up. And you're trying to engage all those elements to that contracting point and then driving it up and scapping the suit. Understand?
Okay, one more minute, guys. Any questions, just ask. Oh. Come on, Daisy, I'm watching you. Do it. Scott Sensei. Yes, Sandra. Right, so when I'm doing when I'm doing this um, technique, I um, my back foot, I kind of I'm kind of pulling my back foot, I'm dragging my back foot when I'm doing my Gyakazuki. Yeah. Is that a common trait or is this just something that I Yeah, do? okay. Okay, yeah, mate, guys, just watch. So uh sandra sensei has asked a very pertinent pertinent question okay so a lot of people do this right so they'll they will they'll drag their foot afterwards and um like with the exception of the first one where you're you're sliding in uh you should really you, sh you don't want to so actually ignore what i just said about the first one because it's, it's the same sort of issue what people do is they put their weight forward they kind of leap in and then the loose connection and then their leg drags behind them like some sort of you know zombie karate with this one specifically, that heel doesn't leave the ground, that heel doesn't move. So if I, if I show you kind of a, from, from this point, like I'm, I'll show you from uh, this angle. Uh, like I want to drive from this leg. This leg, just, just like if I did Gakazuki in a Kihon sense. If I did Gakazuki in a Kihon sense, I would step forward, driving in. And that foot is the, that leg is the driving factor, right? So from here, I want the same thing. What I don't want to do is rotate, leap in, and then this foot kind of drags behind me. That driving of the leg has to be synchronized with the driving of the arm. So, so don't aim to, do, to go any further than just a full pace forward. And make sure that you're compressing into this point. You're compressing in, drive, and it doesn't move. So it's that, it's that kicking of the floor that creates the, the, the power as you drive in with this hand. If you kind of kick the floor and then relax your leg, you ha have this drive afterwards. You want to try to avoid that because what you're doing is you're not driving from the entire extension of the punch. And that's something that you need to show. Uh, okay. Yeah. Little question. When you are showing, can you move a little bit from the camera because we could not see your feet really. Unless I'm looking at the wrong camera. You're looking at the wrong camera. I'm looking, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll forgive you, Justina, but the rest of the people on the call won't. Okay, last 30 seconds, guys. Give it a go. I've turned my other camera off, Justina, just to help you. Okay, um, Guy says has just asked about uh, kind of your head position, so you, you can see you can see um, your your targets. I mean, ultimately, ultimately, you don't want to kind of you know we have this ability, or well, most people have this ability to to rotate. So what you don't want to do is take your eyes off that point for any length of time. So so you don't want to kind of just shift your head in in line with your shoulders. You want to have that sense of going in. In and quickly round and driving in. So, so the so just like ultimately, don't take your eye off the target. Okay, make sure okay. you're keeping you're keeping that forward as much as possible, depending on the ability to shift your neck. I don't think there's many owls out there doing karate. Understand? That's it. We yes. we lost the picture. We can't see you. That's because you were using the wrong camera. Use the the good camera. This camera. Look look for the speaker. Look okay. for the speaker view. If you look at the speaker view, then I'm here in full glory, so to speak. <laughs> okay, 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 next one, guys, next one, let's move on. So, um, okay, AJ Sensei and I will demonstrate. Come this way, AJ Sensei, so you can see. Okay, so we'll go from that uh, gap of that we've just done. Okay, we're gonna step back out, UK, back leg, now you're gonna get to see. Okay, yeah, knee, time. Okay, try that guys. Stepping backwards. I UK back leg by any Give it a go. Okay, try that guys. Tommy, keep your stance more stable, yeah? As stable as possible. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, nice. Okay, okay, yame, yame. Okay, so, so um, let's take it up. First and second combination, you're showing kind of control of your center line, uh, the, uh, the ability to uh, keep that inner thigh muscle connection, uh, the ability to fine, fine tune and fine fire your, your hip and your glutes kind of like firing in with the technique, yeah? Okay, we're moving on. This one, a little bit shows the ability to kind of be subtle with your hips. So like up until showdown, that you're either in hand or showman, okay? So you're either hips are square or your hips are back, and that's it. But like by the time you get to showdown, you want to understand that this is not two points, but it's merely two points. It's not like two positions, should I say, but it's two points within a spectrum. And so, so when you're making hip rotation, you know, you're, of course, we practice here and we practice here, but actually it's this rotation that we're practicing. And throughout that rotation, we want to, the ability to kind of transfer body weight, body mass into our technique. So when you step back at UK, then an awful lot of people, they, they pull back into that kind of tried and tested full handling. So if I step back, for example, at like UK Jack Suzuki, like the position I would make into Hamni um, uh, before making Jack Suzuki is slightly different from the position that I'd make if I was then going to do Jack Suzuki. I don't want to inhibit this kick. So this full rotation only means that I have to then rotate or then kick across my body or it's a little bit awkward. So it's the ability to show that you have subtle, more nuanced understanding of hip rotation. That hamni is not always hamni. Sometimes it's ma hamni, complete hamni, when you make maybe I do kick to do gakazuki, or maybe it's just hamni, like that 45 degrees of position. Maybe it's even shizen, that natural position. So you can easily fire up the migraine before you make gakazuki. So it's a little bit more subtle. That's one point. Second point is that one of my pet hates, and I think it just looks sloppy and probably a lot of examiners are the same. Like you're gonna step back, you've just made this gakazuki. Get that tight preparation. Get that kind of good preparation. The vast majority of people I see, they'll swing this arm up. And really what you're not, you're not doing is you're not using your shoulder, this expansion, contraction, to produce the IQ. Like so much of the basic blocks, we practice by preparing. We pre prepare, we execute. We prepare, we execute. And as a result, you get this ingrained movement. But with IQK, the hikite is the preparation. So this never becomes ingrained. So even by black belt level, this kind of fast, fast preparation is in game, and they start kind of swinging up. No, just make sure as you initiate that movement, get that hand back, so you have a full execution of the IQ game before firing that out and making action. Understand? Okay, one minute, guys. Give it a go. Any questions? Just ask. You can watch AJ Sensei and Ruth Sensei demonstrate with accents. Back straight, Andrew. Don't over rotate. Then Ty Harrison, just make sure you keep your back straight as you release that back, uh, that mic again. You're you're turning your back like lady swing in a little bit. Yeah? Head straight, uh, Marisa. Don't look away. Yeah. Then Ricky uh, Bertram, don't don't push, don't thrust that Maigeri. Just let the it's the compression of the abdomen that produces the kick, that fine twist of the abdomen, yeah, not not the push. Yame, yame, guys, we, uh, we'll we'll move on, but just a couple couple of things, yeah. Just just that I noticed there, like it's really super important that like. That when you kick, you're not kind of that, that your core strength doesn't fail you. You know, you're you're kicking from your abdomen. It's that kick that is producing the kick in order to fire that out. If you produce the kick and it produces that, you you destroy that line of connection. So just make sure it's that compression of your abdomen that is producing the migeti, not like kicking with your leg. Yeah, and and if you do that, it becomes a fine twitch. It has to be a snap. 
like the release of the kick is much more about a relaxation rather than a thrusting or kind of forcing the for the forcing the kick in. Understand? Okay, good. Okay, okay, next. Okay, okay, you're in. Why am I demonstrating? We have to see. Okay, you're in. Okay, something to do. Okay, hitch. D. Stop. K. Ta. Okay, what the? Two more. Hitch. D. Okay, good. So. So two game, you're going P, you're rocking back Zuki. Okay, give me a go guys, let me see what you're doing and then we'll talk about it. Okay, okay, so um, look, this one and the one afterwards is, is about being able to show that you can project your center, project, project, project. So you're shifting, you're not shifting, but you're, you're driving your center in with your technique. You're trying to put body mass behind it each time and connecting your technique with that driving leg. So um, look, there's lots, lots of different ways to do it, but that's the fundamental principle that's at play. So like just the way I, I do it in the way that, um, like I think is important. Okay, this is, I'm going directly towards the camera. Okay, this is my center line, my center center, my correct center line. So as I step forward, chest is opening, getting that preparation, and I'm driving forward that, that right leg in order to make Satsuke. Next, I'm gonna compress my shoulder. You can use two hands, you can use one hand. It can be above, it can be below. It makes no difference. So like each body type is gonna produce a different kind of feeling, yeah? But you're getting that compression of your shoulder, and again, you're going to drive that back leg. I'm driving forward your going I'm still on that straight line. Next one, I'm going to use that back leg to drive that Uraka. And I'm going to round it off to Gakuzuki. And again, I'm still on that straight line. Quite a lot of people are doing this. You are, you are stepping, moving to the side, coming back and coming back. And you haven't actually shifted your body mass. If you watch from the side, uh, you know, I step forward. This is my center line. It's still in the same place. It's still in the same place. And if anything, you end up moving slightly back as you as you pivot on your heel, on your ball and your foot. There should be a level of projection. So you are projecting forward. You're projecting forward. You're projecting forward. Each time it doesn't have to be much. Where ha you have to show the ability that you can fine tune that back leg to push your body mass forward in the direction. Of your technique. Understand? One problem with that though is then people start replicating the superficial. And when you start replicating the superficial, this is what happens. You go one, two, three. And what you end up doing is just kind of leaping forward and that back leg drags behind you. That is far worse than staying where you are. Push, drive, twitch from that back leg, but don't leap in. Understand? Okay, any questions ask you not, give it a go. Thank you, you sensei. Huh? <laughs> and if anybody wants the HDK headquarters instructors to come and teach you this, don't ask Rue. <laughs> Oh, Rue, he says he was just about to invite you. <laughs> okay, you have a one more point, guys. One more point. Like, like, ju like just this Urakan, yeah? Oh, um, Urakan. Then, then, like, generally speaking, it would do Urakan, of course, as a snap. If that's all you're doing. But like, if you're doing something else, like for example, Yuraken Gakuzuki, like the, the, the hikite is the snap. Don't be going one, two. Yeah, it's too slow, too cumbersome. It's a bit like, you know, like in Dian Yonda, when you're doing one, two, you'll see people go one, two, three, four. It's like overplay, right? Like the, 
the snap is the uh, the hickey tape. The snap is the hickey tape. Yeah. So not one, two. It's too formulaic. It's too uh, basic. Okay. Okay. Thirty more seconds. Any questions, guys? Just ask. Uh, Pelly, ask a question. What did you? Pelly from his from his kitchen whilst he's sipping champagne. Look at. I can see you, Pelly. <laughs> he what did you ask? I saw you. Uh, moving towards the opponent. Yeah, each each technique, each technique, driving. If you feel like you're moving, then you'll 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 probably try to move. But if you feel like you're just driving and twitching in, then you'll kind of have your momentum momentum go behind you. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Yes. Could you explain again how you use your back leg to push yourself forward? Okay. And sure. Okay, guys, just the last last one before we move on, yeah? Okay, look, um, so, okay, there's always pushing your back leg. So, so I step forward, right? I step forward and make soft UK. But of course, from this kind of super loaded point, it's easy to drive forward uh, into, into kind of exact. Your back leg, you're in harmony, there's a big bend in that back leg. So don't load your leg. Your weight's already there. You can't load it to push more forward. It's, it's, it's too slow, yeah? So your weight's already there, you can prepare, but you've got a lot of drive in that back leg, so use it to drive forward. From here, like 50-50, so 50% 50 of your weight's on that leg, Oh, you've got a lot of drive in that back leg, so use it to drive forward. So it's just, in every stance, there's always drive in that back leg. Even if you're in, you know, Zenkutsu, and I'm showing, my leg is still not locked out. This is locked out, sticks your belly forward. If you kind of push your tandem forward, your, your, your abdomen forward, your leg is straight forward, it's not locked out. So even here, I have the ability to drive forward. So stance has to be alive. And it means that you can always push forward, you can always push back. Okay? Ray Sensei had a question. Did I just say, say Ray Sensei? What did you say, Ray Sensei? Uh, sometimes... Yeah, uh, so Ray Sensei said, do you sometimes use the Yurakan movement as a Jodambarai while moving it to Zegsach as a sweeping motion um, and keeping the back leg uh, for the last Akatsuki? Uh, yes and no. I mean, the, the thing I would say about, about that feeling, if, if you use this as kind of like, like, you know, you're here and you use it without any drive, then it becomes like a hollow, a hollow feeling. It just becomes a hand movement. So even if you were using it as a John and Brian, you want to have a little bit of a body momentum behind that in order to add kind of mass. And if, it's, if there's no mass to it, then you've got to have speed. So maybe you go in opposition this way. So, so really, like to make this, to save everything for this Gakuzuki and just make this kind of a hand movement and let everything for that Gakuzuki um, uh, is, is, I would say, counterproductive. Secondly, I would also say that like, once you start doing this, then yes, yes, that might be the start of the Yurakan, but it's also the start of the Gakuzuki. So allow that, allow that to continue to be the Gakuzuki. So that initiation of the Yurakan is also the initiation of the Gakuzuki. Understand? Did that answer, Ray? Meant to John and Brian was moving to Zenkasach. Well, this one? Yes, is that what you meant? Well, from, from, from here, this way. Speak to me, Ray. Unmute yourself and ask. Sensei, you turned to me. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, so it's not Ray Sensei, it was Geese Sensei. Oh, no, you meant Geese, sorry. <laughs> I get, I get, I get you senior grades moved up, mixed up. There's so many of you. <laughs> Sorry, Guy Sensei. Sensei. So is that what you meant, Guy Sensei? He's not talking to me. Sensei, Sylvia, you want to ask him? Yes. <laughs> so essentially, the Yurikan and the uh, Yakusuki is the same movement. Yeah, it's one flowing action. Yeah. Yeah. So no, no locking with the Yurikan. No, never. Lo no, 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 never. Even though you're not kind of snapping back, that doesn't mean you don't snap. Boom, you snap, you snap to Hikite. Now like, come on, this thing. Okay? That's good. Okay. Yes, Simon says it. I just noticed a lot of time people sort of 
you know, we want Zen Kutsudachi, Kiba Dachi, Zen Kutsudachi. I think sometimes people morph into sort of a, a nothing Dachi, don't they? So people start yeah. by listening to Uki in almost in a sort of Kiba Dachi. So maybe for just when people think about doing the show, Dan, or everything that you've said, but we need yeah, we need to see the transition between stances for this, yeah? Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely, yeah. I mean, like each point of Kime, each drive from that back leg is a way of projecting your centre, and you're projecting your centre through a specific stance. And that is Zenkutstach, Kibarach Zenkutstach again, yeah? So, so make sure each of those stances are very cleanly represented. A lot of people kind of are already thinking about the MP when they make the Sotsuke, so they're already in a kind of half Kibarach, yeah? So be very careful about this, yeah? Okay, let's move on, guys, because uh, if not, we'll run out of time. Okay, so next one. Yeah. Dynamic duo will demonstrate. So, uh, okay, so if I just show my ass, my video. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Stepping back, stop. My smile, look at it. Okay, give it a go, guys. Let me see what you're doing. Then Michael and Wim just try to keep your back straight as you do the Maya again, yeah? Ooh, Wayne Sensei, nice one, Yeti. <laughs> you can see me, Dennis. Then Wayne Sensei, you should not train with your ring on. I see Sensei told you nothing. Okay, okay. So, so guys, again, this one, it's, it's basically trying to get you to, or giving you an opportunity to demonstrate the same thing as the Sotuke combination. And that is control your stance, control your center line, and your ability to kind of put that back leg drive into your technique, yeah? So uh, I'll just show you from uh, like the common mistake that I've seen or straight away seen people do. Okay, so you're, I'll show you from this angle. Okay, so so you're gonna, you're gonna step back, yeah? You're gonna step back and, and you're using that back momentum to produce the Maigeri and then you kind of fall forward into uh, the Zeku statue. Okay, what's super important is that that point of Kime of, of Shto is, is made clearly, yeah? So, so from here, you're putting back Shto. Then this is, the, oh, this is as far as you go back. The next one, you're driving in. Driving in, by any driving in, look at it. Now that's different from leaning back. I'll show you from uh, this angle, yeah? So this is, this is my center line. I am only shifting forward. I am not leaning back. I am shifting forward as I make that my game. So this is where this is my center line. In, in, in. Understand? Also, depending on your hip flexibility, it'll depend on how much of hammy you're making in stop. So, like, you know, you'll have you'll have some people who are fairly square on when they do stop. And depending on flexibility, like to kind of quite hammy. Now that's about hip flexibility because the last thing you want to do is put strain on, on your knees and suddenly have your knees move. So wherever you, you know, your knees are facing where they are, wherever you are finding your natural position, for Hami or for Shuto, that's it. But if it's here, it's fine. If it's here, it's fine, or somewhere in between. Either way, don't feel the need to make sure. Like this is such a kind of ingrained shape that we make when we learn Maigeri, that people think they have to do it, even when it's really counterproductive. Okay, let me show you. Kicking my Yeti in Hamley is really super strong. It's like, you know, punching Kazamazuki. You driving in that hip is super strong. So wherever you land, that's where you push from. Don't rotate into the my Yeti. Push, push, push. Really. Understand? Try guys, give it a go. Any questions, just ask. Uh, Eden, you're kind of falling into, into uh, showman when you're kicking, yeah? Maintain that hip position. Just drive from that back leg. Adam, your, what is it, hot muscles, Ollie? Your obliques. Oblique muscles squeeze to get that my getting up. Uh, Paul, Paul Maha, keep that shoulders relaxed, yeah? A little bit tensing when you're doing the kick. Relax, relax. Then, uh, Daniel Pilgrim, give yourself a little bit more time on the shuto. Stop on the shuto, 
steady yourself and then kick from that point, yeah? Don't use, yeah, yeah, don't use the momentum of stepping back to facilitate the migrating. Any questions, guys? Just ask. Okay, okay, yeah, man. So, um, yeah, go on, sorry. Um, when you are doing this technique, you're stepping back one full step, but when you do the, uh, yeah, the nukete, yep. you're sort of like driving your body and weight forward, so you don't make a yeah. full step back every so, time. Yeah, absolutely. So a little bit like the Sotsuke, there should be a sense of progression. So again, I'll, I'll show you from the side, yeah? Um, so I, I, I'm going to step back, so yeah, one, one full pace back. So you're stepping one full pace back stop. Then from here, I don't want to just kind of kick and then move to the side. Like, um, like worst case scenario is you step back, your body mass is going back, you kick as your body mass is going back, you fall down and your back heel kicks out and you even move back on the nuptase. So at no point has body mass moved that way. No. So you want to have this sense. Now, first of all, you're stepping back, defensively your hip puts back. Next one, you're going to drive forward. Drive. That's going to send that momentum forward. Drive forward. You're going to find some squeeze, and then you end up kind of squeezing in, not kind of flicking out with your heel, but squeezing in. You're going to find some squeeze as you're projecting your power forward. So, yeah, ever so slightly, maybe between ever so slightly to maybe a maximum of like, I don't know, one shoulder width movement. That's about it. But what you don't want to do is again try to orchestrate that movement by kind of sliding in, yeah? And you're just kind of orchestrating the superficial. Brilliant, thank What's you, Okay, one other point, guys, before we move on. Exactly the same as the Ag UK, there's an awful lot of people who, as soon as they kick with that leg, the structure of the core muscles kind of fails them and they start to kind of break their line. You must be able to push, push that mind in without it affecting your upper body. And that's not something that you can learn. That's not a secret technique. It's just physical strength, physical core strength. And so, you know, as a, quite a few grading examiners on here, one of the biggest things that we see, uh, kind of give advice about is work on your core strength. Because this is not, nothing that we can teach you. This is just your ability to physically do what you're supposed to be able to do. Understand? Okay, good. Okay, let's move on. So next one, my dynamic duo will demonstrate. Uchuki, Kizamazuki, Gakazuki. Okay, yeah, i Knee, tuck, chi, Okay, so that's it. Guys, who chew game? Kiss up, chew back to chew Okay, let's see you. Go for it, one minute. Amanda, Sensei, don't, don't try not to move your feet between the punches and the, the block and the punch, yeah? Feet don't move this one, guys. This is not like the previous two. There's no transition. Keep your feet still after the step, obviously. Then, uh, Jules, like, just make sure that back leg is firing each time, yeah? Don't lock the back leg out. It looks like you are a little bit. And Josh, Hannah, just like this is this combination is stepping forward in the com in the syllabus, not stepping back. Okay, and, and again, make sure you don't fidget in your feet between movements. Okay, okay, yeah, mate. Okay, so guys, uh, yeah, we've moved on. So there was a first first two sets, first two combinations really kind of uh, uh, kind of showed one or give you a chance to show one skill set. The second two, another skill set, this is slightly different, yeah? So this is, again, a little bit of subtle control of your hips and a little bit of subtle control of a relaxed shoulder so you don't, like the Kazamazuki shouldn't be about kind of just forcing your shoulder in. It should be, again, that kind of tweaking of your hips and tweaking of your shoulder to produce that speed. But uh, ultimately, ultimately, there's a couple of ways to do it. First of all, okay, you can step forward and make full hand. So you can step forward and cut your hip completely. You can relax a little bit and then have that kind of hip vibration too, so that opposition of movement as you snap that gap, uh, chops, uh, and then finally, 
that is it here. Or a little bit more social control, which I kind of think is better, is that you're stepping forward in Shizen. You have that rotation and then rotation again. Now, the difficulty is that when people start to kind of rotate inwards for the Kazamazuki, so they've made Uchuke and they rotate inwards for the Kazamazuki, and then they're super loading this leg, or generally speaking, they come back into a, a normal kind of stance afterwards. So be careful about your, your knee position, should be solid, should be constant. Also, be careful about your foot position. Don't go one, two, and move your foot, three, just because you're kind of projecting your sense that way. Again, this is not a demonstration of practical, uh, uh, practical technique. It's a demonstration of physical ability. And there's a big difference between the practical application of karate and the physical practice of it. Okay, now most of the time, luckily, there is always form and function. But with these combinations, it's much more about showing your physical ability rather than practical application of it. That's for other things like kumite and kata. Okay, okay, carry on guys, one minute. If you've got any questions, just ask, guys. Oh, it's Scott Sensei. Yes. Um, you said you've got the, the two options, the, the hand knee relax, hand knee option. Yep. Yep. Or um, Shizen, and then what are you doing? Is it, is, is it Shizen? Yeah, so, relax? So, um, so landing is Shizen, and then pulling back to hand knee, driving into shoulder. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. A little bit more subtle, a little bit more fine control. Uh, but it, yeah, it makes. It's a different way of doing it. Guys, I don't want to rush through these, but uh, if you've got any questions, please ask. If not, I will take one more look at you guys and then we'll move on. Uh, guys, just watch those front knees, yeah? It's about kind of being able to control your core without it affecting your foundation. Okay, Yame. Okay, so guys, one last point here before we move on. Like, just be careful. There's an awful lot of people who are, who are thrusting out, and that back leg is quite straight. And there's no, there's no give there. There's no push. There's nothing left in that leg to drive your body mass forward to kind of put, put any kind of power into that technique. Just make sure that you know you that that hammy that you land in, that back leg is still ready to fire, still ready to push it, still ready to do something. If it's locked out and dead. For sure, maybe that technique will, will be okay, but, but like nothing else afterwards, yeah? Your, your, your stance, you really, you're making your stance, not for the technique that you've just done, but the technique that you're going to do. Your stance has to be alive. You have to have the ability to be able to project your body mass in whatever direction for the technique that you're going to do, not the technique that you did. What's that? Okay, good. Okay, let's move on. So, next one, guys, is, um, Yokogeni Kiyagi, Yokogeni Kikomi. Okay, let's see now. Okay, it's... Ni! Ta! Chi! Okay, okay, so, guys, let me just talk about the, the, the final points first a little bit, and then I'll give you a chance here. Yeah? So, look, you have to clearly demonstrate the difference between Kiyagi and Kikomi. And, and it is not the difference between your foot moving fast without stopping and your foot moving fast and then stopping. That is not the difference, okay? One is a snap and one is a thrust. And that is a function of your weapon and joint. So, for example, my elbow is going first. At some point, my elbow stops and it projects my weapon out and we call that urakum. Elbow first, stops, weapon goes out. That is an, a, snap, a snap, a snapping technique, okay? My elbow is constantly behind my weapon, okay, and it thrusts out. This is a thrusting technique. So a punch is a thrust and a urakin is a snap, okay? The same dynamic is at play with your leg. So, kiagi, my knee goes first. At some point, my knee stops and my foot gets snapped out, okay? Kokomi is my knee wants to be behind my foot, like if an extreme example like this, and I thrust out, 
Okay, so I have to clearly demonstrate, I have to clearly demonstrate that my knee goes first for the snap and my knee goes last for the thrust. I'm snapping and thrusting. Now that can be a Giran height, it can be a Tudan height, or you can show off and do it at Joran. But you must be able to demonstrate those two clear things for this, for this uh, to be successful. Understand? Kiyagi, joint first. Kokomi, joint second. Okay, try guys, give it a go, let me see what you're doing. Okay, okay, so a couple of things, guys. Firstly, like don't sacrifice the integrity of your, of your, of your center line, your structure, just for height. So a lot of people are obviously leaning away, all your body mass is going this way, just so you can kick high, yeah? Like it's pointless, it's waste of time. Much better have all your body mass go in and kick kind of gira uh, or knee height than none of your mass go in or kick joran, yeah? I guarantee this first one is much more effective. Second thing is that if you watch from the side, then, okay, the moment, the moment that my foot goes kind of to the outside, then if I start to snap, then no matter how fast it looks, ultimately, ultimately the course is from the outside. It's like a bad, my, a bad mawashigeri. Well, it's like a bad mawashigeri, and it is a bad yokogeri, okay? You must make sure that if this is your center line, this is your direction of kick. You're getting literally kicking to the side. So your foot comes up, your knee comes up, and that, that foot continues on that line right the way through to that movement until you come back. Even if that's a giran, churan, or joran, but that's your line. Secondly, it's equally important as for the second one. So you've snapped, a lot of people then come out to the outside and then they thrust. Well, again, they're doing a, a bad thrusting, maloshi gary feeling. No. That foot goes out, it comes back to the same line. So make sure that you've snapped for it's coming back to the same line. Then I'm opening my hip, but my foot is still on that line to thrust directly out again. So that line of your hip, knee, and foot is should be always to your side. So be super careful about that, yeah? Okay, give it a go, guys. Any questions, just ask. Try to keep control of your upper body as well. Like a lot of people are using their flailing about with their upper body just to kick high again. There's all these things to kind of try to get yourself to kick high. That's not important. Scott's the same. After the Kiyagi kick, when you have finished the Kiyagi, then yeah. your knee is pointing uh, in, the, in uh, the side direction. Should you bring that knee back in front of you before you do the Kikomi? Yeah, okay, yeah, mate, guys, just watch. Look, watch from the side. Don't, don't, like, like you're gonna kick Kiyagi, right? Then, kind of, this is the classic recoil of Kiyagi. If that's all you're doing. But if you're gonna do Kikomi afterwards, recoil like this. Like, once you send that kick out, and it's, and it's flying out, you're only thinking about the next technique then. It's gonna come back. So bring it back in a way that you can kick Kikomi. Don't go, one, two, three. You're wasting your time. Yeah. Try to have that kind of control of your of your hikiash, your return of your leg. Okay. Thirty more seconds, guys. Any more questions? So, Ask, and if not, so one. If, yes. if I understood, if I understood it the correct, so uh, when you have kicked the kiag, yeah. You shouldn't uh, have the knee in the same position. You, you should all bring the knee a little bit back before the kikome. Yeah, if you just watch, I'll do it slowly. Yeah? So, so I'm bringing my knee up, foot going out for kiagi. As I recoil, I prepare for kikome. And then I push kikome. And then I come back. And then down.
But that's about kind of core strength control, the ability to twitch from your core to bring it back. It's about those things, yeah? Rather than just kind of lashing your leg out, throwing it out. Okay, Yami, let's move on, guys, because we're rapidly running out of time. So, Maligiri, Mawashigiri, Gakazuki. Heiji Sensei, Ru Sensei, we'll do trick. Okay, so take Gakazuki. Okay, Maligiri, Mei Maligiri, Mawashigiri, Gakazuki. Ni, Ta, Shi. Okay, Yami, good. Okay, so a couple of important things that I would say. First of all, don't come back to Jukamai. Okay, this is still Kihon, and this like you should get it. We make you come out there, you really want. Okay, so from here, you kind of maintain your form. Should this this is kicking a uh, punching straight? That's the line that you're going to kick. So you're kicking direct. Then from here, use your oblique to get that foot out to kick round the washigiri before connecting that back leg drive for the gakazuki. A lot of people they use their upper body to kick when it should just be about. This engagement for the guy, my this engagement for the moshiri, and then drive in that leg. So we watch from the side. I'm maintaining my form, okay, engaging my core, relaxing my shoulders, and then it's straight my giddy. I'm going to bring my foot slightly off the side as I rotate, then I'm going to use that leg to drive in that position rather than kind of falling in and punching afterwards. Understand? Okay, give it a go, guys. Try it. Let me see what you're doing. Thank you for that very enthusiastic thumb, thumbs up, Denise Sensei. I appreciate it. Noah, keep your form as you're kicking. Maigeni, Mawashigeri. Clean, sharp kicks. You too, Andrea, keep your form as you're kicking. You too, Eric, keep, keep your form as you're kicking. Then Sammy, you're kicking too high. Kick lower and more correct. I don't know who that James Langley is, but he must be brilliant. He hasn't got his camera on, but he must be my long lost cousin and must be brilliant. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, yummy, yummy, yummy. Okay, uh, guys, couple of things. There's an awful lot of, uh, there's an awful lot of this uh, kind of upper body movement. Uh, then, then this is one of the, like, like if I was doing the examination, then of course different exam examiners uh, will will be uh, looking for different nuances, uh, and that's fine. That's like the uh, that's like the uncertainty of uh, of your Dan examination, yeah, and that's part of the package, right? But for me, like I want to see that complete body control as you're as you're kicking. So so I'm seeing an awful lot of people who are kind of one, two, three. No, I want to see that complete control, yeah. Uh, and that you're kicking from your abdomen and kicking from your hip. That's one thing. Secondly, you would never punch with a loose wrist. I don't want to, I don't, I wouldn't expect people to kick with a loose ankle. So I'm seeing a lot of like, you know, flailing kind of feet kind of going around. Like I want to see my game. I want to see, I want to see my game and I want to see my washi game. Okay, I want to see those two points. So from here, you're kicking my game, you're kicking my washi game, and you're pushing Gakasuki. Ball of foot, ball of foot. You understand? Okay, one more minute, guys, then we're going to move on. Because we're really over time. If you've got any questions, please ask. If not, we're, we're moving on. I think these, okay. Okay, yeah, mate, good. Okay, guys, look, I was talking about like in twos, combination of twos, right? So, you know, this, this is about, this is for me, this is about showing that you have that core strength to kind of twitch out techniques. So like, for example, the equivalent of the knee down syllabus, uh, the down syllabus would be this, this sense of kind of from your sacred start, you're kicking my head, kicking your head, kicking my head and stepping back, yeah? Like your leg, obviously, is your heaviest limb, heavier, heavier limb than your arms. And so, if you can, if you can twitch out your limb, your leg, with your core uh, repeatedly, then this shows that you have not only core strength, but also fine twitch, kind of short twitch muscle control as core strength, so that you can go from a contracted 
Ready position, fire out your technique and come back to relaxation again. So the Yoki Eri Kyagi, Yoki Eri Kikomi combination and this, this Maya Eri Morshi Eri Gakusu combination is about that ability to fine twitch your core, send your limb out, and also like of course the Gakuzuki is not only sending your limb out, but still having some power in that Jikawash, that supporting leg, that when you have done that one, two, you still have ability to drive in with that, that third technique. Understand? Okay, good. Okay. Penultimate combination. Okay, you're Jukamai. Okay, you should get that Zuki. Back to Jukamai. Ish. Knee. Sun. Shi. Okay, yeah, man. Okay, so like, I've not got anything uh, extra special to say about this combination that I haven't already said before. The one thing I would say is that people get quite flappy. When they do your shirigiri, you want to keep your kamai, even though you're going round, you're not flapping out, and you're still having that ability. You're still having that ability that you've you've done your shirigiri, but you can still drive in with that gakasuki, drive in with that supporting leg, uh, and then you can start with your kamai. The other thing I would say is that this is not kind of like this is not like a a circular technique. This is a straight technique that you twist in the middle. You're going straight, twist, straight not kind of round in this big manner. Understand? Okay, let me see what you're doing, guys, and then I'll, I'll see if there's any other issues. Sensei? Yes? Um, are we pulling the Gyakuzuki back? Yeah, yeah, so this one, this one, it, it makes sense because, because you, you, as soon as you start to move, you're gonna kind of come into a Kamai. So it's easier just to start from this position. Now, some instructors might ask you to keep that form, that's fine. Uh, generally speaking, I don't, but it's, it's either way, either way, it makes no real difference and you should be able to do both. Thank you, Sensei. Okay. Okay, um, yeah, guys, we're not gonna, because uh, we're, we're running out of time, but um, the one thing I would say about that is a little bit like some of the other combinations. Don't release that front foot. The last thing you wanna do is, the last thing you wanna do from this point is step across, like show your bum and then kick. Think forward, forward. You're gonna probably pivot on your ball of your foot as you drive forward, but your initial momentum is in not step across to facilitate the kick, okay? What's a really good training method for this is like the understanding that like Yushirigeri comes from judo. Like judo before it became an Olympic sport and stuff like that, you know, it had, uh, it had kind of a uh, kata, this judo kata. Uh, and in part of that kata was Yushirigeri. So you're like, it comes from that kind of like, I forget the name of the, of the throw, but like that throw, you kind of come with that, this is, you can kind of do Yushirigeri. So literally Yushirigeri was kicking someone behind you in judo. And then, uh, you know, karate, well, Shotokan really took it, took it on board. And then because we don't fight people behind us, you know, like for competition, we started to apply it kicking forward. So we had to spin first, right? But it's not a spinning kick, it's a back kick. So it's really super useful to practice your shuri game like this. So if you're in Zenkslatch and you're in the dojo, right? Just kick behind. Kick behind and step down. This kick behind, step down. This is a great way to practice your shuri game. It gives you the feeling of how it should be. That's that driving leg pushing in. And then when you get that feeling, then you start to replicate it. This leg is going to drive me forward. This drive forward, then drive forward again for the gap is me. Back to you, come on. Understand? Yeah? Very good. Okay. Okay. Any questions, guys? If not, we're going to move on. I'll give you 10 seconds. Sensei, one question. Uh, yeah. When are you doing the rotation? How do you rotate? Is it with a snap of your hip to get the rotation? Well, yes, it's the well, it's not yeah, snap. It's it's really, you know, just obviously rotate your hip, drive the back leg, inner thigh muscle squeeze. So you know that sense of uh, I'll show you from this angle, that sense of of kind of of course rotating my hip, pushing my back leg, inner thigh muscle squeeze, and then from this point on you can drive out freely. Uh, but it's that, again, 
fine twitch of control of your hips, in a thigh muscle squeeze, drive from the back leg, back straight, shifting your mass in, uh, and the rotation. It's just a very challenging way to, to demonstrate that. Okay? Okay, guys, last combination. Okay, so stop, stop. Okay, get on right, and ten. Yeah, hitch. Knee. Thumb. Chin. Okay, yeah. okay, so. Look, there's a, there's a number of ways of doing this, but I think what the fundamental thing that you're trying to show is a fluid, relaxed kind of movement through the, the combination, the two techniques, without that stiffness, uh, making it circular in nature, so your technique is, is coming circular, circular, and, and at that point of kind of kime, that you still lock in your body. You're still locking your body, even though that might not be translated directly to this stiff heart arm. And I think it's an understanding of how, how uh, circular techniques are really important within karate. And so what you don't want to do is straighten them. So I'm seeing, I see an awful lot of people who straighten this technique and straighten this technique, when really it's round, round. This round, round feeling. And at no point really do you stop those hands, okay? That's super important that you have that kind of, that relaxed fluidity within your, within your upper body. Second point is your stance that you can you can hand me hand me through it. This hand me relax hand. This hand me hand. That kind of feeling. So you're twitching, twitching your core to replicate that movement. But still, correct form, correct form. Don't make it sloppy. It's such a fine balance between sloppy, kind of too flicky, powerless technique. Yes, Ray Sensei. Sensei, so no he could carry out to the fourth one. No he could no no definite stop. So so um you can you can relax your hikite hand. What I would argue against is this overuse of hikite. So you'll see people go one, two. And this hikite hand is used a lot. Now this is such a fluid action, that this hikite hand has limited ability. Because this is already moving and this is going from zero. So yes, relax. Yes, have that kind of relaxed feeling. But really think about it as the punctuation of the technique. That pulling of your hip, uh, engaging of your lat, shoring up this side of the body is the punctuation for this technique. However, holding it stiffly there is no. the So this is okay, but this stiff is horrible. So relax, relax. This relax, relax. Oh, and you can kind of punctuate yeah, it. getting that small twitch. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no definite more. stop on the force one. No definite yeah. stop. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, just, <laughs> thank Daisy you. Was worried then that you're going to hit her. Okay, guys. Last thirty seconds. If not, if no questions, then we'll move on because we're running out of time. Then, uh, Vince, not with your last second technique, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you want it both to be in opposition, yeah? Both to be in harmony. Yeah, you, you, don't want, you don't want the kind of the weight of this arm to drag your body around with it. I mean, you can do technique like this, but, you know, this is in unison, but this is in opposition. Hamley, Hamley feeling, yeah? One, one, two feeling. That kind of fine twitch, fine twitch. And also, okay, Yame, last point, guys, last point. This preparation, yeah? The, the bigger preparation you make, the, the greater strain on your shoulder. You know, it's, it's like, if you're gonna hold something heavy, you know, the further away it is from your body, the greater strain on your shoulder, closer it is to your body, the easier it is, right? So you're kind of putting a lot of strain as you use your shoulder in this dynamic way to prepare the technique. If you're preparing like this, then you're gonna slow your preparation hand down to protect your shoulder. Whether you, you want to or not, subconsciously, that's what you'll do. So have this kind of, a little bit kind of hand close to your head, and then you can really dynamically kind of use your shoulder to, to whip that technique in. Same with Sotsuke, really, yeah? In this kind of classic practicing kind of body dynamic type of way, yeah? 
obviously practically has no application, but it's good for training your body. Okay. Okay, yummy. Good. Okay. So guys, that's all the grain syllabus uh, for Kihon. We're going to quickly uh, go over uh, kind of Jewish Pong Committee and talk about a few issues there. Uh, but uh, but we will, I'll, I'll stay on board, I'll stay uh, on the call afterwards. And if anybody, anybody's got any kind of questions about the Kihon, then I'll be feel free to uh, ask. But I'm just trying to get through uh, both these two elements before people have to leave, yeah? The one thing I would say uh, about this is that, look, when I when I took my shodan in, uh, in 20 years ago, that was only 20, 20 years ago. Oh no, 30 years ago, <laughs> 30 years ago. Uh, there was no grading syllabus. Uh, I, I literally, I, I turned up as a, um, a 17 year old uh, uh, kid kind of to the big course and uh, the instructor was like, okay, stand there. Okay, do this. So I did it. Okay, now do this. Okay, so I did that. Uh, now do this. Okay, so I, and, and that's how it went. And okay, pair up with, with him. Okay, do commit, do, do commit. So I did. Okay, what well, bass I die? Okay, do bass I die, and then another cat. I had no idea what I was going to do. And, and, and there's, a very, there's, a, there's a, a big downside to not having a grading syllabus because you literally can't prepare uh, and, you, and you don't know what to expect. But the upside of, of not having a grading syllabus is that you have to be really well prepared because you don't know what to expect. And so, like, this is important. And like, you know, lots of people ask, and it's really nice to see like, like 90 people on, it's fantastic, yeah? And that people are interested. But what I've said today is just what I'm thinking about today. And I want to have a, a clause in this, in this course that I might change my mind. Or more likely, you know, we have quite a few Dan examiners in the HDKI, they might feel differently. But what they'll all see is that you've reached your unique potential. And they're looking for your unique individual potential. So they'll look at you, you know, who's this candidate? Are they, you know, a, a child or an adult? Are they male or female? Are they young or old? Are they, do they have any kind of, um, you know, physical uh, inabilities or ailments? Or are they super fit or healthy? This whole host of factors that play into going, has this person fulfilled their unique potential? And this syllabus is a vehicle to judge that. It's not in itself a way to become black belt. It's just merely a way to show that you are already a black belt. Do you understand? That's super important because, because I know what happens. What happens is that, oh, well, uh, you know, Scott says he said this, and but Guy says he said that, but uh, Simon says he said that, but you know, David says he said that, or you know, whoever it is. Oh, they all, all kind of appear that we're saying maybe different things. Well, generally we don't, but we, the nuances are different. But the point is the fundamental principles be underneath those nuances are identical. Do you understand? That's super important to understand. Okay, let's see. Bruce Sensei and AJ fight to the death. Oh no, do you come to that? Do you come to this? Okay, so uh, come a little bit closer to me and that way a little bit. Okay, try to stay in that area. Okay, okay. Room sensor, you're sat. Don't you on my get emotional? You're giving me shit. Jordan. Yeah. Judah. Yeah. My getting. Yeah. My wash getting. Yeah. Yoko getting. Obviously, uh, this this is much more about me going to talk rather than you. Like like you, I, I can see there's a few people uh, who are have training partners there, so you can maybe try this in a bit. Uh, Daisy can beat up her dad again, uh, you know. But uh, ultimately, it's going to be me just explaining a few few important elements. Okay, the first, okay, go home committee, five steps sparring is is the initial this initial way of teaching distance. Mark. 
So, for example, uh, AJ sends an eye out of the same height. <laughs> okay, now, we're about, about the same height, right? So, like, uh, so, you know, basic common primitive, the first thing you do is, you know, as beginners, you check your distance, this kind of, uh, kind of danger zone. Anything beyond this distance, I can't put on me. I can't punch it, right? But anything here, then I'm going to make contact. And so it's about learning that distance. It's about learning that distance, and we do that like Jordan, and we're going to step forward, and we're kind of maintaining one, two, three, four, five. He punches Kakazuki. He's still in distance. We come back, and still we're in that distance. So, so it's a way of practicing one, two, three, four, five in a set distance, right? It's that first way of teaching you my distance. Okay, key on epon committed distance, one step sparring is the next step. So, so he attacks him. He attacks Joram. Now, I, of course, can step back, block, counter, and I have to be in skin touch. But also, what I'm learning is that I don't always have the, the necessity to go back. Like, I can think about it as like a clock face. So I could go, I could go kind of 45 degrees forward, and I can block this way, and then come around and, and maybe make 10 feet. And I'm, making, I'm learning kind of different weapons and the distance that they make. Or I can go, I can go directly to the side and, and make a kazuki. Yeah? I can go 45 degrees, make a little bit of distance and make my head. I can, of course, go straight back. I can go this way, maybe more washing area around. Okay, I can go this way and like again my head or Kizamazuki Kakazuki. I can even go this way and think about how I can make that ship arrive. There's all these things that I can do in, in Kioni Pankurite that maintains that kind of arm's length distance, but gives me that kind of circular kind of uh, approach. It becomes more 3D rather than 2D. So that's Gohon Kumite, Kioni Pankurite. However, Juipon distance is twice as big. And so, so from here, um, then we are thinking, this is now the distance, okay? And he steps back, I step back. Then what I think is that I have my circle, my circle of danger. He has his circle of danger and they're both meeting just there in the middle. So, so for example, when he attacks, I, I he's right in each other. If I can easily stand where I am, block, punch, I'm in touching distance and then he has to go back. If you do that in Jupon distance, in Jupon committee, fail. Because what you're not showing, you're showing that you understand distance, but you're not showing that you have a dynamic understanding of distance. That is, he attacks you, you have to retreat, then go back into counter and then retreat again. So you're always maintaining, you're always maintaining that distance. So I'm, we're thinking we're always going to maintain this distance, yeah? This is my zone, that's his zone. He said, my guy said, back. If he attacks in, I have to retreat. And I've retreated out the way. And so we're still within that distance. He's encroached, he's gone to mine. I've retreated out the way. And then I have to go back in and then come back out again to, to say so. And then we reset. You know, he comes in Chudan, he encroaches, I move out the way. I go back in, I move out the way again. And then we reset. You understand? So, so what you're doing, is you are, rather than this set, 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 you are attacking. It pushes the defender back. They go back in quickly to counter and then back again to that safe distance, and then you reset. So attack, push back, back in, defend, reset. Understand? Now, that's the basic distance, my. Second important thing is that you show compression. So, so if he attacks, there's no point in me just kind of leaping out the way. Okay, there's no point in no point in me leaping out the way with my legs sticking out, and then I kind of just lean in to touch and then come back out. I have to be able to rapidly, rapidly shift. And the only way that I'm going to do that is by having my stance dialed in. So I can be on the ball of my foot in a time to squeeze that back leg, back knee. Punch it to target every single time. So I can easily crouch and then come back again. So when he attacks, when he attacks, I'm still engaged, I'm going in and then come back again. Yeah, I'm not kind of like 
kind of just shifting and leaning. So I'm showing that I'm showing that uh, I'm showing that compression, compression of my block, execution then back again. That kind of thing. What's that? That's the most. That's second important point. Third important point, of course, is zanshin. I word it. Zanshin. Zanshin means the spirit that was there. Zan is like before. Shin is spirit, mind, essence. So the spirit that just was. So for example, like if he, if he's attacking, then one, two, I don't turn off. Like my spirit was there. That's where it still has to be. So I'm going one, two, in. That's where my spirit was. That's where it still is. So again, that sense of sanction, that sense of connection. Understand? Okay, so let's watch uh, Rue and AJ do it one more time. Just join on to my Gary. And then if you have any questions, we'll talk about it. Go for it. Join on to my Gary. Yeah, this way a little bit goes. Jordan. We have, sir. Shoot up. We have, sir. My Gary. Okay, so so of course when you when you do that, there's a whole host of things that can go wrong. You can lose your, you can start flapping about in your 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 kamai. You can step back and your bum starts sticking out and you break your line. You don't have enough core strength. You don't have enough control of your inner thigh muscle. You don't have a greater understanding of distance, and you get you go too far or you're too close. It's a whole host of things that this is is very challenging and and challenges you with. But ultimately, those three important points on a technical level are, are really important, as well as spirit and you know, kind of like just that kind of sense of of uh, determination and ability to penetrate your targets and have a sense that this technique's going to work. So there's a whole host of kind of other kind of kumite elements that can go wrong, but ultimately, technically, that's what we're looking for. Understand? Okay, any okay. questions, guys? Yes, yeah, one question. Uh, yeah. Look, the level of control when you're doing kumite, obviously you need to be uh, make it look like it's going to work and that you're going to demonstrate that the, the technique's going to work, but obviously you need to have control. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the person who's attacking is attacking. I mean, they're, they're one full pace away, They've told you where you're going to attack. If you don't block, they should hit you. Yeah. Now, obviously, there has to be a level of control, and obviously, case by case, if you're a big, a big aggressive kind of talented, uh, fast uh, person against someone who is none of those things, then you're going to lose use a lot of control. But you know, if you're both equally matched, both kind of equally graded, and you step forward and attack, and you've given them all those tells. Uh, and they still don't block, then, well, you know, that's going to teach them to block, move, move quicker. But counter, always control. Always. Good. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, guys? Can I just do a quick observation, Sensei? Yes. Yeah, just that, but the most common thing I see when people do this on gradings is they, they do like hybrid Ippon Kumite. So a lot of people, you know, maybe instructors, you must teach your students to snap the counter back. So the counter must be on target. It must be snapped. So quite surprisingly, disappointingly, often people will do like a stiff guy kazuki and keep it there. And the other one is on people's attacks, especially the oyazuki. For some reason, a lot of people seem to attack gaia kazuki, and all yeah. the attack can leave it there. So it's really important that as instructors we teach people the transition points you just taught. But when you do jiu upon, it's free. It's not oyazuki. Leave it out. It's, there's a snap in every technique. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I think that Ju Kamai, that resting position, that ready position, is the only position that you keep. Yeah. Everything else is transitory. Everything else is movement. Okay, karate is not a shape. Karate is movement. Yeah. So so the only shape that you you make is that Kamai, literally to be ready. When you're attacking, you're you're straight away. When you're defending, you're straight away. Back to that point. At no point do you hold your form ever in Dewey Pong Committee. Okay. Anything else, guys? No? We all good? Okay. So, uh, like, 
Of course, we have uh, Ray Sensei. You know, you're okay. Uh, yes, Sensei. Sorry, that point you made. So it's that aggressive still, that attack, you still attack aggressively because you do see in certain grades and they're half heartedly thrown techniques and it makes it, the defender sort of get that loose connection yeah, yeah. as well. So you still attack. I know, as you said, you have to attack with control, but if yeah. they do not block, you're telling them exactly pinpointing where you're attacking. If they don't block, you still must be able to touch with control us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, this is karate. And I, like one of the, the one of the biggest downfalls of like of the biggest drawbacks of something like this is that you can get paralysis through analysis. So, you know, like don't do Jimmy Pong Kumite thinking, right, Scott said I have to think about this circle around me and I have to constantly come back to this point. And you're thinking about all these things while someone's hitting you in the head. No. Gosh. Make sure, make sure at the end of the day, this is Kumite. Okay. And yes, of course. Kumite literally means the exchange of hands, the co cooperative exchange of hands. But the cooperation is we've agreed to these rules. Nice. I'm going to try to hit you. You're going to block. They're the rules. So you have to try to hit them. Nice. So, yeah. So, yeah, you have to show spirit. You have to show that you have intent within your technique. You can't just give someone something to block. Nice. You're not doing anybody any favors. Nice. Okay? Nice. Thank you. I, 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 would, I would add, Sensei, when people do their key arm, to quote Rick Jackson's, you know, kicking kicks. So, you know, I think, you know, you're, you're, when you do Mayagiri and Washigiri, you know, you have to do a very a viable Mayagiri that looks like you're trying to kick something. So, you know, avoid just chucking your limbs out. So, yeah. I mean, you know, on a downgrading, sometimes we, you know, we want people to show us some spirit. So technical technique has to be there, but there needs to be, so with the kicking, they're kicking when they're doing shooto, they should look like they're attacking something. So avoid, avoid flapping your eye, flapping limbs about. And, you know, if you don't show spirit in your grading, you know, we, we know you, you will fail. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But if we have to say to you, show us some more, you're on the way for failing anyway. You know, I mean, quite often we will do that because we're nice, but I get really annoyed if I have to say that thing more than once to someone. Because yes. you need to show that intention rather than just you know aggression. It needs to be intention. Uh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So, so always form and function, yeah. Like without yeah. without form, then we're just kind of fighting. Without function, we're just prancing about in our pajamas. Must yeah. have form, must have function, and a, and a good balance of both. Uh, so yeah, okay. And, no, no, one more thing: when I'm watching people throw in like two techniques. You know, everyone here can, you know, can do Mayagiri, but suddenly we ask them to do Mayagiri and Mawashigiri, they sort of ruin the Mayagiri to do a sort of a, a half assed Mawashigiri. So give value to every technique. And if need be, just practice. If you struggle with Yoko Geri, Snap Kick, Yegi, just practice that loads and loads and loads. And then when you can do one nice twitchy Snap Kick, then bung your thrust kick in. So come to your grading prepared. You know, don't say, oh, I can't do kicks. Find a way you can do kicks. And we know we've often said to people, you know, a good low kick is better than a terrible medium, a terrible high kick. So find a way to show us your techniques. Okay. That's it. Okay. Okay, guys, listen, uh, we, I think we've done uh, as much as we can today. Uh, obviously, kata is a, is a different thick kettle of fish altogether. The only thing I would say is that in my dojo, I never, I never ask anybody or never expect anybody to do anything other than Batsai Dai for their short examination. Okay, I, I, I've been to dojos and I guarantee the more of those katas that they know, like Batsai Dai, Kanku Dai, MP uh, and uh, Gion, the more of those that they know before the shodan, the lower the level is. Uh, don't mistake quantity for quality. And so I, I, without exception in the almost 20 years that I've been running my dojo, and all the dan examinations that have gone through through my my dojo that have gained shodan, not one has done anything other than Basai Dai. And more importantly, not one has known with any great level any other kata apart from those seven. The five Heian katas, take a shodan, Basai Dai. That's it. And I'd much rather people do a really good Basai Dai, even though they're bored to the teeth by it. <laughs> I'd much rather them do a really good Basai Dai and pass nicely then think that they're doing well doing MP or Gion or, or God forbid, can could I. And, you know, I think, well, Jesus, yeah, they would have passed if they hadn't chosen that cutter. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, guys. Let's go. Thank you.